Hey, Dave, how are you this morning? Fantastic. Fantastic. Always great. Always enjoy spending Saturday morning with, with our Life Vantage family. So uh, thank you for coming on and, and being here with me. And for those that don't know you, um, if you wouldn't mind, just, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you live, where you're from, how long have you been in Life Vantage, and just, just some of the basics. Great. Thanks. Well, first of all, Dave, thanks for the invitation to be here today. Um, I'm always honored when I'm asked to speak, and I, I truly take it as an honor that uh, people are willing to, to invest their time in listening. So thank you for inviting me today. <clears throat> when I came to Life Vantage back in 2009, I'm going to tell you, it, it was at a strange and weird time in my life. I had uh, uh, been struggling financially. I'd been struggling a lot. Um, our, a few years before that, um, I'd lost my job. My company actually shut down the division I was in charge of. Even though we were quite successful, they didn't see that particular division as a long-term future. And, and so I went to making nothing overnight. And then about 18 months later, I was in my chiropractor's office, uh, Dr. Gary Campbell. You guys know Skip Campbell. And uh, after I got done with an adjustment, Skip said to me, Greg, he said, what are you doing tonight? And I said, nothing. Why? And he said, come back to my office at 630. I've got something important I want to share with you. And that's all he said. He didn't say anything else because of the fact I have a, a lot of credibility and a lot of belief in the guy. And we'd been not only doctor patient relation, but friends for a dozen years. Um, you know, I, I said, absolutely. And I came to listen to what he had because I believed in the guy. And so um, I came back that night to listen to the story. And as it turns out, uh, Tyler Daniels was there. Uh, this was in November of 2009. Tyler Daniels was there to present the, the meeting. And uh, at the end of that meeting, quite honestly, I, I knew right then and there that I had found something special, something unique. And I'd done network marketing before. In fact, I'd done seven other companies. And quite honestly, I suppose you could call me a seven-time failure because I never made enough money at any one of those seven to even cover my expenses before I came here. So fortunate I am, blessed that I am, and uh, I consider myself the most fortunate and blessed person to be part of the Life Vantage family. And, and I always make a point of regularly thanking Skip for the invitation to take a look at it. Because if he would have not had the faith in me to say, hey, I've got something to share with you, I might not be here today. And I can't imagine how my life would be different. And I certainly it wouldn't be as good as it is today. I promise you that. Um, at that time, I was working as a, uh, as a deputy sheriff for our local county sheriff's office. I was the deputy in charge of our animal control division. So I had everything to do with all kinds of animals, domestic, livestock, wildlife, all kinds of things. Quite honestly, it was a great job. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the people I worked with. I enjoyed working with the public. I always looked at it as an opportunity to help and educate people every day. And, and uh, as long as I got to do that, we got along great. There was a certain segment of society that didn't want to be helped and educated, and they wanted to give up their time and their money. And if that's what they wanted, I accommodated them. I don't know how else to put it. But, uh, you know, the reality is I loved what I was doing, so I had to do something different. And when Life Annie's came along, I saw something. I didn't know what. I wasn't smart enough to understand it at the start, but I saw something special. And I said, I've got to try this. I've got to leap. Um, for those of you who don't know my story about how I got in, quite honestly, I was dead broke at the time. I couldn't rub two $20 bills together. And at the time, the way my wife and I were making ends meet was we were selling trees off of our ranch. We have a small ranch that has about 2,000 uh, ponderosa pine trees on it. And I was probably selling eight or 10 of them a month to other people, um, and primarily a tree buyer, um, to make ends meet. So that's how it all got started. <clears throat> and um, we're now, you know, 10, 10 and a half years into it. I joined in December, right on December 1st, I believe it was, of 2009, joined the company and uh, hit the ground running and, and the rest is history. That's, uh, that's, what I want, that's what we love to hear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's moving, moving forward, moving forward. But um, it's really interesting because you said you've, you've done network marketing before and you've been in seven other companies. And, uh, you know, oftentimes pro five is that rank where you start to realize like, this is happening. Like this is, this, like, this is different. Right. And, uh, and I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, when, when, when did it change for you? Like when you hit pro five, did you realize like, this is, this is different than your other experiences? And, and if so, what was it that made it different? How did it, how did it change? Well, I didn't have to wait for Pro 5 to realize it was different. Um, the first month in the business, I was able to cash. And I remember laying that check on the counter and my wife said to me, is this real? And I said, yes, it's real. And she goes, is this going to last? And I said, I have confidence that this will last and we, it, will, it will be outstanding for us. 
And she said, great. And so I knew early on that this had greater opportunities. Not only was the product set tremendous, even though we only had one product at the time, but it had the ability to create income early on before someone had real, if, what most people define as real success in network marketing, which is usually the elite levels and above in our company. And, uh, and so I knew it was different right out of the gate. The journey to Pro 5, quite honestly, I, des I define it as all out massive action and hair on fire. Um, we just went as hard and as fast as we could. If you could fog a mirror, I was talking to you about Life Annings. I was inviting you to a meeting. I was inviting you to see a video. Um, we only had at that time one product. We only had the one video. We had no marketing materials. If I sat down to tell somebody about the business, I had to pull out a piece of paper or literally a cocktail napkin and, and draw the plan on the back of a cocktail napkin. We had nothing. We had, I mean, it was all brand new. It was, a, it was all an incredible brand new start. And so it was tons of learning. Not only were we learning the product, we were, I was learning the, the company and it was such a different company and such a different culture than I'd ever seen anywhere else before and on, on a massively positive scale. Um, and I was also starting to learn the industry. I was realizing for the first time ever, I was getting guidance from, from other uh, successful network marketers that said, Greg, you can't just be smart about Life Vantage. You've got to be smart about network marketing. So you need to start reading books. You need to start doing the personal development, all those kinds of things that quite honestly, I had not been mentored on before I got here. And so we hit the ground running with that. And um, it, you know, all I can tell you is it was a fantastic journey. I was blessed to be joined by great people like my good friend, Bert DeBrois and his wife, Ruth, um, Amber Swanson, her daughter, Presley, um, the Blanches, uh, Steve Fixter and his wife, Susan, uh, Adam and Tiana Tim, you know, so many people had joined the team and, and got in there in that first, you know, six to nine months that just made it an amazing journey um, of, of meeting all these wonderful people and growing so quickly. So, um, you know, I was blessed. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I was blessed. I had a, I had a meteoric rise in my business. And so I, I have to give great credit to my team. They're the ones who made the journey happen. Um, it was, it was, it was quite, it, it was quite the journey because it was nonstop learning the whole time. So, so tell me about that because, because that, that rise to the elite ranks, that, that doesn't happen by accident, obviously. That takes a lot of hard work. And like you said, if you could fog a mirror, you were talking to people about Life Vantage. But, but tell me this, did you do anything differently to go from Pro Zero to Pro Five than you did to go from Pro Five to Pro Seven and then Eight and then Nine? Is the process different or is it, is it kind of the same activities with more people? It's some the same and it's some different. You continually still have to recruit. I will tell you the biggest mistake I ever made when I made, I think it was around Pro 6, for whatever reason, I focused 100% of my effort on helping other people within the team. And, and I will tell you that that's the big difference between 5 and 7. You've now got usually enough people in your team. You've got enough runners. You've got enough builders that need help. And at the time, you know, we were a baby in, in, in swaddling clothes for a company at that time. We were all learning and learning fast. We were doing everything we could. We had great connections with the corporate staff to learn about the product, to learn about the science, uh, to, to learn about how to work with the company. And so I was more or less the focal point in a lot of that, not all of it, but a lot of it. And, and because of that, um, I spent a great majority of my time doing nothing but working with, as, as we used to say at the time, work with the next hottest fire that's in your team. Whoever's on fire, go work with that person. Uh, interestingly enough, at Elite Academy 3, I think it was, um, I was up over $100,000 in volume. And one of my own distributors came up to me, one of my elites, um, not, not yet an elite, but soon to be elite, uh, Russell Blance. And he says, Greg, he said, I hear you're over 100000 in volume. And I said, yeah. He said, well, why didn't you cross the stages of Pro 7? He goes, how's your balance? And I said, what's balance? Because I was never taught balance. That's when I learned balance. I was so far out of balance that of that 105,000, 3,000, whatever I had, like 82 of it was in one leg. And so that taught me immediately I needed to understand the comp plan better, understand balance better, and, and pull out of that leg and start spending 80% of my time in the other people with the other leaders in my team and not just focus on that next hot person 
that just happened to be in that leg. And so it was a real learning experience for me. I was learning nonstop and I'm still learning. I, I, it seems like I learned something new about this business every time I turn around. So I will tell you the big difference in the journey from five to seven was your team is growing, your team's expanding. Um, we added a new product. We added True Science at that stage of the game. So that was the first time we had the anti-aging cream. So now we had two products. We had Nerf 2 and we had the anti-aging cream. We didn't have anything else, but we had those. And so we were, we were starting to get a little bit of marketing material to work with. People were starting to get creative and, and make their own uh, marketing material, make their own videos. So you kind of had to keep an eye on what was going on there. Uh, quite honestly, some of it was quite compliant, some of it wasn't. So you had to really pay attention to what was out there and guide your team as best you could. Uh, a lot of things like that were happening. And so um, my, my time was being spread to foreign countries. Um, I was having to, to learn how to deal with people in other countries, which I hadn't, hadn't done before. And so a lot happens in that zone between five and seven. And I think that's when you have to be a good time manager. You have to decide who I'm working with, where I'm working, how I'm working. Um, and, and just make sure that you don't put all your, your eggs in one basket. Yes, you've got you've to help people grow. You've got to get your biggest leg to, the, to over 400,000 if you want to be a pro 10, which I wanted to be. And, but you've got to have other legs to go with that. So you can't just dump all your time one place. So that for me was a really, really big learning lesson. That's awesome. Boy, what a bunch of, you laid a lot of great little nuggets on us just now. Hopefully everybody's taking notes, but if they're not, we are recording this. You can go back and watch this again, but balance and, and working on your outside legs and, and there's a lot of great stuff in there, but let's, 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 I'll, the last question for you, Greg, is, is this one. Um, a lot of people are always looking for that one thing. And so let's, we'll try and boil it down to that one thing. If, if there was one characteristic or one thing that you would recommend distributors need to have in order to be successful, what would it be? In, in a single word, I would use the word vision. Um, I have a lot of conversations with people about their whys. You know, why are you doing this? What is it you want to get out of this? And I think a why is incredibly important. But if you came to me today and said, Greg, what, what is your why? I can honestly tell you, I don't have one. I don't have something that's that all encompassing burning thing that's out in front of me that I'm trying to, uh, to uh, reach. But what I do have is a vision. I have a vision for where we're going to be in the next five years in this business, in the next 10 years in this business. I love to look back at 10 years ago when I got started and, and, and I, I can remember what my vision was then and I went, it was all hope. It was just hope and a prayer that we were going to have something fantastic in the future. And I just, I had a belief. I just, I just knew there was something going to be there. And as I look back to 10 years ago, when we had one product and we were doing presentations on a cocktail napkin, uh, we didn't have any uh, tear off sheets to sit down in front of somebody with. In fact, I wrote, I think I wrote the very first tear off sheet the company ever had. It was something we called one through nine because it had nine bullet, you know, topics on it with a couple bullet points under each one that you could walk people through. Um, you know, we didn't have any of that kind of stuff. And so we, it was on a, it was on a wing and a prayer, you know, it was on a hope and a prayer and gasoline. Boy, I'll tell you what, we were burning up the gasoline and the miles in the car as fast as we could go because that's how we built this business. We didn't have social networking at the time. We didn't have any of that kind of stuff. So everything was done knee to knee, heart to heart, face to face. Now we've got other tools. Um, to build the business. So I would tell you the number one thing I think you have to have in order to be successful in this business long term is you have to have vision. You have to have vision for what you see, not only for yourself and your own family, but for your team and for what you see for this company five and 10 years down the road. To look back now and see what do we have now, like 20, 21, 22 products. I don't even know. There's so many of them. I, don't even, I can't even count them anymore. Um, today, I've probably, since I got out of bed this morning, I think I've used 13 of our, 14 of our company's products uh, since I got out of bed this morning. I didn't dream 10 years ago that that was there. I knew something was there. I knew something special was there, but I didn't know what it was. So now I can look back 10 years at the vision behind me and say, wow, this is what we've done in the last 10. And if that's what we've done in the last 10, as basically babies in this industry, what can we do in the next 10? What will it look like 10 years from now? And I'm going to tell you what, that keeps me awake at night sometimes. And it wakes me up in the morning to get me out of bed and say, I want to go do this because it's important to me because of where this is going to be in 10 years. 
I look at myself personally being in a position in 10 years from a financial standpoint that I'll probably be giving away 50% of my income or more. I can't wait to be able to hand checks to the charities that I support. I sit on the board of directors of, of two nonprofits. I can't wait to put money in, in, those, in those coffers. I can't wait to put money in my church. Um, I think you all know I'm a big rodeo fan. I put on two professional rodeos. I can't wait to help support my professional rodeos more because um, it's something that's just super, super passionate for me. Um, and and I, I can't do all that stuff I want to do today, but I see three years down the road and I see five years down the road and I see 10 years down the road. And even if the product set doesn't change, and I know it will, I know it'll grow and it'll get better than what it is today because we've got the right people doing all that. And, and I'm not it, mind you. Um, but the reality is, is I see where the next five and 10 years are. You've got to see that five and 10 years in front of you. You've got to believe that five and 10 years is in front of you. You've got to believe what it's going to do for you personally, for your team personally, for your family, and for this entire company and for our country. Let's be honest right now, guys. Our, our country's in the toilet right now. There's so many things wrong, we can't even count them all. But you know what? We can control part of that because we can help people. Every single person I talk to today, two things at the top of their list is their personal health, their family's health, and their finances. We've got uh, the ability to help people with all of that. And so please get out there, please share. If they're fog in a mirror, talk to them, find out what the pain points are in their life and then turn around and say, hey, based on what you just told me, I've got something you might wanna take a look at. Might be for you, might not be for you, I don't know. But give me the respect of our friendship for 30 minutes of your time. Let me share with you what I'm doing. You tell me whether or not it fits into you. And so it, it's huge to me to be able to be where I'm at today not only helping the people we're helping, helping the animals we're helping. Obviously, our pet tandem product for dogs is outstanding. My dogs get it every day. And so I, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm happy. I'm fortunate. Thank you for having me on here today. It's been a pleasure for me to be here. Um, I hate to run, but guys, I, I'm moving my mother-in-law this weekend. And I'm sure my wife is sitting over at her house right now going, okay, where are you? So I got to help go help her finish up a move this weekend. But uh with the strength and power of Nerf 2, we're going to go do that. So Dave, thank you, brother. Appreciate you.